Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited to share these three cards today featuring the Bobble Bubbles from This Calls for Confetti. I'm going to show basically how to put the cards together. I did most of the stamping, coloring, die cutting off camera, mostly because I wanted to really focus on the different ways that you can use these Bobble Bubbles. For my first card, I'll be using the Small Circle Bobble Bubbles with the Cozy Winter Mix the Scallop Circle Frame Dies, the No See All Season Tree Die Set, the Mix and Match 2 Paper Pack, as well as the Simple Sentiment Strips Stamp Set. I traced around one of the Bobble Bubbles onto a piece of white cardstock and just did a really rough cut with my scissors. It didn't need to be perfect, I just wanted it to cover the back of it so that it would hold my sequin mix in place. The Bobble Bubbles do have a self-adhesive backing on them. So once I had my cozy winter sequin mix added into my bubble, I used a dental pick to remove that release paper and then I just made sure to press around the edge very well once I placed my white cardstock on top of that. Anything that was hanging over the edge I just kind of edged in there with my scissors to cut that off. Next I took my little flower that I had die cut using the pink and white polka dot paper from the mix and match to card pack and I had die cut that using the scallop circle frame dies, which fit perfectly over the small bobble bubble. I used a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that to adhere it in place. And then it was time to finish up this card. Again, this card is pretty clean and simple and very easy to create. And again, I wanted to focus on the bobble bubbles more than anything else. I cut a half inch strip from the mix and match to paper pack and adhered that to my card base, which is a top folding A2 size, A2 size note card. I placed my bubble onto this piece of cardstock, which measures three and three quarters by five and a half, just so I would know where to stamp my sentiment. Once my sentiment was stamped, I used liquid glue on the back of my bobble bubble and adhered that in place. I die cut a couple of leaves from the No See All Seasons Tree die set and used liquid glue to adhere the leaves into place. Once my leaves were in place, I put foam tape on the back side of the panel with the bubble and then adhered that to the front of my card. To finish it up, I added a couple of sequins from the Cozy Winter Mix. And because these little confetti pieces are so small, I like to put a dollop of glue on a piece of scratch paper and then dip the sequin into the glue and then place it on the front of my card. That finishes up my first card and here's another look at the first one. Moving on to the second card, I decided to do a slimline card and turn my small bubble bubble into a balloon. I'll be using the stitched and pierced circle die, the Monster Birthday stamp set, the slimline bunting die set, and the scribbles background stamp. I inked up the background stamp with a very light blue ink and I had cut a piece of cardstock that measures three and a quarter by eight and a quarter and I placed my cardstock on top of the stamp and then with a piece of scratch paper on top of that, I rubbed really well to make sure that I got a nice impression. Next, I needed to decide where to cut out a circle for my bobble bubble. I used my little monster as a placeholder and then I ran that panel through my die cut machine to cut a circle out. I wanted to make sure that you could still see that scribble background behind my bobble bubble when you shook the card, so I placed my main panel onto a piece of blue cardstock that's cut slightly larger and adhered the circle into place. So for the confetti mixes that I used for this card, I used the Whimsy mix, which is primarily blue, white, and silver. Since I colored my little monster green and blue, I wanted to add in some green confetti as well. So I used the glazed lime confetti pieces and just sprinkled a few in with the Whimsy Mix. Next, I removed the release paper from my bubble bubble and adhered that right over the circle with my sequin mixes. One thing I noticed after I finished up my first card and moved on to this card is you can add a whole lot more of confetti mix into those bobble bubbles because there's so much space. If I could do this card over again, I would definitely add more confetti for more shaker fun. Anyway, after I had my bubble adhered in place, I adhered my stamped background to the front of that blue cardstock. I had die cut the star banners 
from blue and green cardstock and I trimmed them down to fit the width of my card and used liquid glue just to adhere those in place. I added a whole bunch of foam tape to the back of my little monster and once I removed all that release paper I added him down on the bottom. Once my little monster was adhered in place I grabbed some blue and white baker's twine and tied a bow. I did just a small dollop of glue underneath the bubble, cut another piece of the baker's twine for my balloon string. I pressed the baker's twine into a little dollop of glue, then I added another small little dot of glue to adhere the bow and added adhesive to the back side of my bubble panel and adhered that to a green note card, which started out at seven inches by eight and a half inches. I scored it at three and a half inches. So my finished card is eight and a half by three and a half. And the final step was to add a little birthday cake and add some shimmer to the stars. I'll be sure to have everything that I used, including all of the Copic markers that I used to color images listed in the description box below for you. Now moving on to the third card, I wanted to do something a little bit different because again, these bobble bubbles are deep enough to fill up with things other than just sequin mixes. I thought a coffee themed card would be really cute to do. So I grabbed some coffee beans and filled up the small rectangle bobble bubble. Once I had my coffee beans in my bubble, I removed the release paper and I placed a piece of vellum over the back side of that. Again, all I did was trace around the bubble and then just did a rough cut around it and then used my scissors to trim off any of the excess vellum that was showing through. Off camera, I had used the coffee break stamp set to stamp a background. And then I used one of the dies from the Simple Windows die set to cut out a rectangle. I used my frame as a placeholder so that I could adhere down that centerpiece. Once that centerpiece was adhered down, I put some 1 8 inch score tape on the back side of my stamped panel. And I finally figured out that it's easier to add the adhesive to the back of this panel um, before putting in the bobble bubble, it makes it much easier to actually put it to the front of a card. So there's another tip for you there. Once I had the adhesive on that frame, I placed my bobble bubble over the centerpiece on the card front itself and then adhered my stamped panel in place. Once that was done to finish up this card, I had added a little coffee cup that I had stamped and colored also from the coffee break stamp set and I used the coordinating die to cut it out and I used my tape runner to adhere my coffee cup to the front. And that is it that finishes up my video for today. Let me know in the comments below which card is your favorite and what other things do you think you could fill up these little bubble bubbles with? Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, we'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.